the parallelism that exists, obviously everybody's familiar with the technical side of open source. You have uh, individuals collaborating and the modality of, of that collaboration, creating kind of new novelty where it otherwise couldn't exist. Uh, is uh, is a critical uh, kind of transformational uh, movement in terms of uh, of crossing geographic lines, crossing uh, lines uh, uh, between uh, countries and individuals uh, that uh, maybe don't get along so well. There's a meeting in the middle that happens around uh, around the technical collaboration of open source. <clears throat> it's a very special experience. Uh, it's actually uh, um, something that I think a lot of people in government and in, even in leadership and organizations don't fully understand how powerful this movement is. It's a social movement that uh, that creates new novelty through the idea that that anyone can come together and build on each other's ideas. It kind of stems from the the basic uh, and most uh, uh, most uh, fundamental. Uh, kind of desire to be able to distill the collective intelligence of a of an organization, of a community, of multiple organizations and individuals to be able to create something that couldn't otherwise be created. And I think it's a it in and of itself is uh, is uh, of monumental significance in terms of how societies uh, are working to be able to create uh, ideas. I think if we look, I just had a call. Two days ago, with uh, people working uh, in the U.S. government on uh, a task force uh, focused on uh, on sharing uh, knowledge, information uh, related to the development of vaccines, um, and so I think this is a, a particularly uh, important area uh, for people to focus on. Um, so essentially. You know, we're, we all have uh, an understanding of how this process works, but what sometimes is lost is how, I mean, that, you know, clearly just kind of reinforcing a point or two that I made is that the, the spread, the scope, the diffusion of open source technology is so uh, significant that every electronic touch we have is enabled by open source. And I think a lot of people, because of branding and because of the people looking at what Chrome is and not really understanding what what drives Chrome, uh, what the Chromium platform is, and, and then they understand Android because it's well-branded, uh, and all of the other in contact points that we have, if we do a Google search, uh, stoplights we cross at, uh, all the platforms that are developed to support uh, autonomous driving, uh, air traffic control systems, so many environments in which we're in on a daily basis, we have uh, a uh, an opportunity to uh, to enjoy and experience the the fruits of uh, that collaborative development that I talked about earlier. Um, and I think you know clearly, I think people on this call, people in this community, understand that uh, software is rising and the uh, the. Uh, as we've grown, uh, Open Invention Network has grown and the community's grown, we've uh, been able to understand the uh, and appreciate uh, the, the fact that more and more industries are being affected. And you think about the auto industry and the auto industry recognized that, uh, as uh, Jim Zemlin's fond of saying, that it was essentially being disintermediated by a smartphone and a piece of Velcro. Uh, and there's been a, a significant transition now that automotive grade Linux uh, has emerged as a significant project to be able to allow for uh, vehicles, not only the cabin of the vehicle, but everything, all the mission critical uh, applications within the vehicle are, are increasingly moving toward uh, running on the common platform, uh, the AGL platform, which is which is built on top of uh, the Linux kernel. And I think this kind of uh, of movement is not uh, not isolated to the to this kind of new new reality for the auto industry, but it's for every industry that we encounter that has historically been hardware centric, is now software centric, and so. Uh, it's creating a, a perfect storm, if you will, for more collaboration, more opportunities for open source to proliferate. Um, and that collaboration is creating connectivity 
that again gets to this idea of a distilled collective intelligence, uh, not only just in a company, but across a country and across uh, national lines to include the entire world of, of contributors. Uh, and it drives a higher level of, invented, of inventiveness and in innovation. Uh, and so this is just an example of the kinds of projects that we support. There are literally hundreds of projects that we support. Uh, and in the parallelism that, uh, that I wanted to talk about is really the fact that what happens on the technical side, this kind of uh, viral, and I hesitate using that term in the current environment, but this viral uh, level of, of innovation and creativity, uh, the organic nature of it. Uh, there's a there's a parallel t- among the uh, the people who are helping on compliance and governance inside companies uh, from the, the legal uh, arena, as well as people who focus on patent risk management. Intellectual property in general is a major focus of uh, of uh, of the Linux Foundation. Uh, uh, and other uh, other organizations that manage projects, Apache uh, and others. I think there's a there's a recognition that uh, early on, probably 15 years ago, and this is obviously it's a movement that's 30 plus years old. But this movement from uh, from the enterprise out beyond to uh, uh, to and look at uh, uh, all the applications that are represented here and many, many more in terms of environments and sectors. Uh, That movement uh, is one that created an opportunity um, for uh, for adoption of code for many, many more companies. And I think uh, 15 years ago, uh, there was uh, a recognition that this was possible, but I don't think anybody in their wildest dreams expected that that there'd be such a proliferation. And so that means that there's so many companies, uh, many of them large companies uh, that uh, have had many issues over their histories with patents, uh, patent litigation being asserted against, having to pay uh, royalties. Uh, There was a real concern back 15, 16 years ago that, uh, that, uh, the adoption of open source code might be slowed or stalled by uh, individual threats and threat nors. Companies uh, at that time, uh, because of rhetoric and because of actions and because of patents in their portfolio, Microsoft was the considered the monolithic threat. Uh, and uh, and uh, up until just a few years ago, when it joined the uh, the op- actually a little op- over two years ago, when it joined the uh, the uh, OIN community and agreed to make its patents subject to cross-license. There was great concern prior to that uh, about what could be done by companies that are wedded to proprietary and uh, highly resistant up until that point of utilizing and adopting open source code. And what that would mean for uh, projects like this, uh, when core code is introduced, uh, the way it should work is that that, that code is picked up by individual companies adopted and incorporated into uh, products. Uh, And uh, there was a fear 15 years ago that that actually wouldn't occur. Um, And so um, there had to be an agreement, a compact uh, between companies around how they would manage uh, their, just as, as exists on the copyright side, uh, there are obligations that go along with the opportunity uh, of open source adoption uh, then that are legal and uh, and create need for governance programs and uh, compliance and and has given rise to all kind, all manner of tools being developed as well as uh, uh, now the uh, the quite recent ISO standard uh, that's been applied to uh, uh, to uh, open chain. Uh, which is all geared toward creating a sustainable, repeatable, normalized process for uh, managing code under the various licenses uh, that exist. And in parallel, there's there's the, the in the legal community, there's been a, an an activity over the last fifteen years. It's very specific and and purposeful to ensure that that comfort could be had around the adoption of code and freedom from litigation. Uh, And this is an environment that is one that 
is very much uh, 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 partaking of a certain duality. There are certain notions that were developed in the 90s that came out of game theory around the idea of coopetition, where we cooperate, uh, um, we cooperate and compete uh, to compete more effectively. We cooperate with each other. And that was really around almost joint ventures, uh, maybe multi-party party activity, but nothing that back then that could be conceptualized uh, as fulsomely as, as what open source is in terms of this very broad scale uh, uh, hundreds of companies participating in individual projects uh, and developing code that could be commonly exploited and used. And so um, this world is not one where intellectual property goes away. Uh, people, if they choose to, can still differentiate based on patenting. Um, but there's a, a notion of where that becomes appropriate and where that's inappropriate. Because where we collaborate and build on each other's ideas in the core of open source, we need to be able to have freedom of action and a, f a freedom to know that that adopting that code is not going to create patent issues and create uh, uh, unwanted uh, taxes or tariffs uh, in the form of, uh, of licensing fees or, uh, or litigation settlements. And so it was important at that point 15 years ago to be able to introduce something that could help uh, provide that measure of support as an increasing number of companies from new sectors uh, that were not terribly familiar with open source and had, hadn't been as software centric as they've become over this last 15 years, they, they could have that comfort. Um, and essentially there's this practice form of duality that uh, individuals that are responsible for intellectual property strategy in a company have, have needed to, to adopt as a result of the, uh, the proliferation of open source. Uh, and part of that, uh, that adoption or, or uh, uh, adjustment is to understand uh, where it's important for global collaboration to be able to solve problems. And increasingly you're seeing companies uh, participate in this uh, in these kinds of activities. Um, OIN uh, is the largest patent non-aggression community in history. Uh, it was started uh, in 05. The early planning work for this was done a couple of years prior. Uh, and uh, IBM, Red Hat, SUSE, uh, NEC, Sony, and uh, Philips were the original found funding founding members. Google and Toyota came on a little bit later uh, as uh, open source uh, became uh, increasingly critical for them. Uh, as I said, automotive grade Linux uh, was launched uh, uh, several years ago. And uh, at that time, Toyota came in uh, and, uh, and wanted to put a stake in the ground to uh, evidence its support for uh, patent risk mitigation associated with the adoption of code from that project and from others that they they rely on. And Google, obviously, uh, uh, as the the author and uh, and manager release manager for uh, the most successful uh, uh, computing slash uh, uh, technology platform in the world in the form of Android. Uh, is deeply committed uh, across its entire platform of pro products and services uh, to uh, open source. Uh, as I said, this is the largest community in the, the history of, of technology, where companies of 3,400 companies and counting have come together from startups to the largest corporations in, in the world. Uh, and uh, they have come together to be able to agree on that basic principle that where we collaborate, where we build on each other's ideas, we, we should basically not be suing each other. And uh, it's, a, it's a pretty simple concept. There's no fee associated with this, this model. Uh, it's really just about, about a behavior. Uh, people coming together to recognize that their interests are driven by collaboration uh, and and, in, and the increased innovation that comes from it and the opportunity to be able to uh, work together out into the future. Uh, we own patents that we've purchased for the purpose of, uh, uh, of uh, uh, reducing risk. Um, we own pat many patents historically that read on threat nors like Microsoft that we could convey 
to companies at risk or in litigation, uh, as we did uh, as one example uh, a number of years ago when Salesforce was being sued on uh, on patents that read on uh, open source functionality that were owned by Microsoft. We conveyed them patents and allowed them to def properly defend themselves uh, and to uh, to uh, engage as an equal in the uh, in the patent litigation. Uh, and and by virtue of that act to discourage further uh, negative uh, uh, approaches uh, by Microsoft, by other companies, again, committed to, at that point in their history, committed to uh, uh, proprietary platforms and fearful uh, of, uh, of the effect of, of open source on the, on the proprietary platforms. So we still own, at this point, over a thousand patents and applications that read on uh, on critical functionality. Uh, and uh, we spent $100 million acquiring those patents, uh, developing, port developing those patent portfolios, expanding them, uh, which has been a very important part of our deterrence, particularly during this period when operating company risk was most acute. Uh, and prior to Microsoft's becoming a participant in the OAN community, uh, we there are over three million patents in the portfolios of the 3,400 companies that are exposed to the cross license, uh, and uh, and we include in order to create what the the scope of the cross license is, we have uh, amassed three 3,300 plus um, core Linux uh, associated uh, open source technology packages that uh, their functionality contained in those packages create together, create the scope of non-aggression and create the, uh, the obligation of, uh, of cross-licensing on patents that, that are held in portfolios of the 3,400 plus companies that, uh, that cover the functionality that's included in this Linux system, which is the scope of the cross-license. And so in order to develop uh, the, um, the that scoping, that Linux system definition uh, that I described just a minute ago, we work very closely with projects, uh, obviously Apache, Eclipse, OpenStack, uh, Linux Foundation, uh, and we'll work with new projects as well. Whenever a project management organization is launched, uh, and there are interesting, uh, um, uh, interesting subject matter in terms of uh, what the focus is of projects, uh, we will reach out as we have with Open Atom uh, to be able to ensure that we are aware of whatever core code they produce uh, uh, from the various projects that they manage. And then we'll look to, uh, to uh, evaluate that code. We have an internal technical committee. That's one representative from each of our member companies, our funding member companies. And then we have a, a broader uh, technical advisory council, which is made up of uh, licensees from uh, across the world uh, that have, uh, have particular knowledge and experience in, uh, in some of the important projects that, uh, that have been launched. And uh, we try to bring those companies in to be able to work with our technical committee to ensure that we are properly identifying code that should be included in the Linux system definition. Again, the scope of the cross license and uh, and that we can properly uh, work together to be able to vet those nominations that have been made to ensure that they truly are core and uh, and that we're not artificially uh, um, covering and uh, and incorporating into into the cross license what would be considered appropriately proprietary technology uh, again the world the world is 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 really about duality uh, there are de there are innovations that companies are, are differentiating on and if that's the, ch the course that they choose to take they should have the right to do that because the laws allow them to do that uh, in various jurisdictions and so, um, I think, you know, there are, there are many good, uh, there's much good evidence over the last, uh, since the American Vents Act uh, in 2014 uh, of, uh, of a world which is creating more, uh, uh, more quality in the patent system and reducing the amount of noise from poor quality uh, patents. Uh, it's not perfect, but uh, I think if, uh, 
if individuals continue to work uh, in Washington and uh, at the uh, with DG Comp and uh, uh, and uh, in Europe and Mofcom and other other uh, bodies around the world to uh, ensure that there's uh, less and less noise, uh, and also obviously work with the Patent and Trademark offices. Uh, uh, it's very important that we work together to create a good uh, definition of what uh, of what is uh, uh, patentable subject matter. And so as an aside, I think it's great when companies uh, share their views with uh, with government to uh, to try to create a, a better environment um, and, a, and more definition uh, that helps with quality uh, around the patent system. And so um, the patent freedom that we're providing for open source projects uh, is very much um, parallel to the uh, collaborative development work that goes on inside these projects uh, and project and that are managed by these project management organizations. And so uh, you have hundreds of very significant projects, thousands of total projects. Uh, and uh, we have code from many, 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 uh, all of the entities represented here, not Open Atom, because none of their projects are mature enough yet. But uh, uh, at some point, we'll probably have code from Open Atom as well that we want to incorporate. We have many, many licensees from China, uh, in excess of 200 of the most significant companies in China, including Huawei, Baidu, Ali, Tencent, uh, uh, 360, uh, many, many other companies uh, that are included. Uh, we are a global organization. Um, this is just an example of some of the represented members that we have uh, in the various sectors. Uh, it's uh, quite significant. Uh, Rakuten and Reliance Geo have uh, operational 5G built from scratch 5G networks. Uh, they're in India and Japan, respectively. Uh, you've got some of the, 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 the biggest innovators uh, and leaders in, in their sectors uh, represented here. Canon has 86,000 patents, I think, by last count, one of the largest patent holding companies in the world. Uh, they're part of this community. Uh, semiconductor companies, uh, uh, tooling companies uh, are participating, and obviously FinTech, uh, uh, we're supporting and include Hyperledger code in the Linux system definition uh, and have uh, uh, are just about to announce that two uh, money center banks, one from North America and one from Europe, will also be joining our, uh, our community. Uh, uh, for those of you who are not aware, uh, Ant is the Ant Financials, the manager of the uh, 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 the Alipay network, and the WeChat Pay network is managed by Tencent. These are the two largest uh, combined, the two largest platforms in the world for mobile payments. Uh, in excess of two billion uh, transactions a day are recorded in China on those those networks. And Union Pay uh, is the bank that does all the clearing for those transactions. And these are these are entities that are relying heavily on open source uh, and are participants in the OIN community where they're recognizing that that they need to uh, to to conform to uh, a set of norms that really OIN is establishing around appropriate behavior. Uh, in the use of patents in an open source setting and context. Uh, even companies, you know, very surprising uh, when I first met with Caterpillar and, and Komatsu and others uh, just uh, five or six years ago, uh, but they were really starting to understand and very, very solicitous uh, to understand how they could start to utilize more software to be able to create safer environments for the operators, uh, and in some cases, to to supplant the operation uh, where uh, it's particularly dangerous, uh, where uh, where risk is uh, is common associated with the uh, use of heavy equipment, and they are participants in our community and and very uh, deeply committed to uh, increasing software intensity in their products. Um, and then, obviously, in the energy sector, uh, LF Energy. Um, is a, a driver in these kinds of companies participating. And uh, we expect that this will be a significant growth area uh, into the future, 
just as the banking community and financial services, we'll see a lot of growth over the next year in terms of adoption of open source code and then participation in uh, in the OAN community as a recognition that this is part and parcel of uh, of the opportunity, opportunities in open source have obligations. It's a social movement, and uh, part of that that obligation is to to behave well from a copyright standpoint, to utilize tools and processes that are being developed to to maintain compliance. Uh, at the same time, uh, on the patent side, uh, to uh, to participate as a citizen of the community in an appropriate way. Uh, because at the end of the day, the only companies that don't join the OAN community uh, are companies that are uh, that wish to reserve the right to sue on core Linux and associated open source functionality. And I don't think uh, when a company looks hard in the mirror uh, that there are many that should be answering that question in the affirmative. Uh, but uh, but nonetheless, you know, 3,400 is uh, is is a significant number of companies participating. But uh, but we continue to grow and continue to look for more companies to recognize that their interests are in collaboration on the legal front, just as they are in collaboration on the technical front. Um, there are a number of reasons to join. Many of them are implicit in what I've just described. Uh, obviously, the fact that it's that there's zero monetary cost is very significant for companies, particularly small to medium sized companies, of which we have literally thousands uh, in our community. Um, but the patent risk mitigation issues, I think our our role in safeguarding uh, patent the companies that are adopting open source code and enabling them to feel more comfortable as they move into uh, becoming more software centric and more open source centric as a result. Um, this is one of the, the key benefits. Uh, and uh, that adoption is something that uh, that's really been central to the growth of, I think, the Linux Foundation and the other project management organizations that I mentioned. Uh, I think, you know, 11, 12 years or 13 years ago, uh, you really had uh, uh, very little um, uh, professional management, I'd say, uh, of, of projects at the level that you find it now. I think uh, we've always had very significant, sophisticated projects, uh, but uh, I think there was there was a transition point uh, when Eclipse and, and Linux Foundation uh, started to become really focused on on the curating projects uh, um, and working with companies in ways that they were perhaps uh, uh, not comfortable in working uh, before uh, in participating in projects as aggressively and as actively as they do. But now you see no barriers uh, to companies participating and no barriers to their adoption. And OIN plays no small role in ensuring the latter. Um, as we are there to specifically encourage adoption and and uh, remove a fear, the fear of litigation um, that uh, that companies have faced, and uh, again paying a uh, a duty or a tax for adoption of open source code. And so, in addition, we provide defensive support. We work with many entities. Uh, uh, we work with the GNOME Foundation in the last couple of years when they were. Uh, being uh, sued by uh, the Rothschild Patent Troll, uh, and we work with them in the background. I think you know they did an excellent job. Uh, the, from the director uh, all the way through that foundation, they did an excellent job in working with outside counsel, securing outside counsel, drawing community support, and uh, and managing that to a very very successful result. Um, uh, but it just shows what working together and collaboration can do uh, when when you're at risk or in litigation. And so we've supported well over 50 uh, litigation or assertion activities where we are coming to the aid of companies that are being sued or asserted against uh, on uh, by patent holders seeking to uh, uh, to be able to uh, extract uh, returns uh, and uh, we have uh, worked with the community uh, to be able to identify prior art. We have uh, 
been involved in as one of the leaders in uh, in the U.S. in utilizing the pre-issue and submission program, attacking poor quality patent applications that are overly broad and potentially dangerous if granted. Uh, we have identified uh, prior art from the community uh, to be able to transfer that to patent examiners so that they could reject patent applications outright or at least scale back the scope of uh, of uh, the patent claims, the patent application claims before granting patents that weren't outright rejected. And so uh, this has been an important part of our activity. Uh, in addition, we have been working with, uh, we brought together uh, what would have been very strange bedfellows five or six years ago, uh, but we brought together um, two very significant operating companies, uh, IBM, and Microsoft to work with us and the Linux Foundation uh, to be able to uh, engage in, in authoring, uh, founding the, uh, the Open Source Zone under Unified Patents, which is an entity that performs a significant amount of work uh, reducing risk in various zones uh, in establishing the Open Source Zone. Uh, they, have, uh, uh, they have been working uh, to be able to uh, uh, invalidate poor quality patents held by uh, non-practicing entities uh, that were EU being used in litigation. Uh, there are literally over a dozen uh, situations that they've intervened to be able to uh, reduce risk associated with non-practicing entity uh, held assets that read on Linux system Linux uh, and open source related functionality. And so uh, that's been a very uh, important relationship for us and one that's helped in our transformation from looking primarily at, uh, since our foundation founding, looking primarily at uh, operating company risk to now pivoting over the last two years since Microsoft became a participant in our community to focusing a significant amount of ten attention on, on non-practicing entity risk. As more and more companies recognize their, uh, their fortunes rise and fall with open source uh, and software in general, uh, there's been a, a level of, of, of a natural uh, reduction of risk associated with operating companies. There still are operating company uh, risks out there that we are working to, uh, to uh, diffuse. Um, but at the same time, we recognize that uh, patents are being sold and continuing to be sold by operating companies that can, can no longer use them in this, in this context to third parties uh, and generally non-practicing entities that will look to, uh, to utilize the patents to sue and extract uh, rents from the open source community uh, or whomever, whichever targets they can ultimately find. And so open source is just, is not necessarily their, their maybe their prime directive since they are equal opportunity litigants, uh, but, uh, but nonetheless, uh, because open source is so successful, uh, it, 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 is, uh, it is becoming increasingly a target from non-practicing entities. And that's why what we're doing with, uh, with Unified is so important uh, to be able to balance and, and complement what we do before patents are granted the pre-issuance program. We're working also pat after patents are, uh, are granted to be able to ensure that they are, uh, that risk is mitigated associated with them. The other thing that's, that's really happened over right. the course. Yeah, sorry to interrupt well, there. We're just uh, almost at time. We, we've got four minutes for questions and we've had several questions from the audience. Okay. So uh, I hope you just forgive me interrupting you there to, to no, put that's a couple great. of that's these great. questions to you. Great. So the first question is about research facilities that hold patents and whether or not they're eligible to join the OIN as well. Yes, individuals, research facilities. Um, we've had uh, all manner of participants from one person organizations uh, to, to, you know, obviously the largest organizations in the world. But we encourage entities like CERN and others to, you know, we'd love to have that kind of participation from company, from entities that have really been driving the edge of open source for, for decades. Mm -hmm. Great. That's, that's nice and clear. And another question from the audience was, do OIN members, they say, still sue non-OIN members over Linux-related patents? I, I'm not familiar with the history of that, but uh, 
are, are you familiar with cases where non-OIN members have been sued by OIN members over patents relating to the Linux system? Uh, where an OIN, I know of a couple of cases where OIN members have sued each other, but not on open source functionality. Uh, right. And so, I mean, Oracle, Google is an example, but that yeah. wasn't about open source functionality. And I don't know of cases where an, a company in the OIN community has sued somebody on open source grounds, uh, it sued a non-participant. Uh, that could happen because they're not, they're not buying into the same compact, if you will, the same obligations, the same belief system. Um, and they're creating their own vulnerability. We can't control that, but it, it could happen, but I don't know of cases where it has happened. Okay, thank you. Another question is, um, why not extend the OIN pledge to require that members either simply don't sue at all over the patents that they hold relating to the Linux system, or that uh, at least they will not sue open source projects, whatever definition that might have? Why, why not extend uh, the freedom, as it were, in that way? Well, I think the, the, the former kind of comment, it, it does, you are prevented from suing uh, with your patents another entity on Linux system grounds um, within the community. And so the idea is to create a bigger community so that there are fewer and fewer people that are outside the community. People that are outside the community, I guess the question is, should we be preventing people inside the community from suing anyone outside the community, even if they haven't joined. Well, yeah. I mean, the, they should join because it's free and because the, why do we want to inoculate people who don't have shared values and uh, are not willing to do the same thing that everyone else has done? If IBM with whatever, 60,000 patents and uh, Huawei with 40,000 patents. I mean, some of these are, these are massive companies that are that are pledging their portfolios. So why would we protect someone who doesn't want to take that that minimal step? Mm. In the interest of fairness, then, from, from that perspective. Yeah. 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 Well, we don't want to see litigation. Uh, but at the same time, we want to see people sharing the same values. Mm -hmm. Yeah, thank you.